Hey guys, what's going on? Um, so t in this video, I'm going to go over how we can get the Fitbit API working. Um, so I recently went through the Strava API, and I just figured while I'm while I'm looking into APIs, I might as well get the Fitbit API working. Um, so I'm at dev.fitbit.com/apps. Um, I'm already signed in. You're going to need to sign in, and the uh, the next step here is just to register a new app. And you'll notice a lot of this is very similar to the Strava process. So we're just going to give this a name, friend, app. Um, this description, uh, this needs to be 10 characters, I think. So just give it like a sentence. So this is for testing app. I'm going to give this my personal website. Um, it doesn't actually have to be a real website, but it has to be formatted like that. Um, so this, I'm just going to say that. For all these, I'm just going to refer to this website I have here and set this to personal. And the callback URL, this is important. For, for the purposes of this video, we, we're just going to give it the local host, which means this computer. So it's going to return information to this computer. Um, and then just read only. And hit register. OK. So now we have our client ID, client secret, and all this stuff. So this looks just like the Strava API, so that's good. Um, that means we're probably going to be able to follow a similar format to how we got the Strava API to work. So next thing we have to look at is the documentation on this. So I think this is right here. No, that's not it. Uh, here we go. The web API, that's what we want. Um, so yeah, this is it. implement the OAuth 2 authorization flow. All right, so there's a lot of stuff here. Obtaining consent. So similar to the Strava API, the first thing we have to do is get the user to um, authorize this app. So we're going to do this uh, in the browser. It's going to be a one-time thing that we're going to do in the browser. Um, so, so we're going to send the user to a website that looks like this and then they have to check it and then from this once they say accept or allow uh, it returns us a value a code so here is that the the uh, you know the um, makeup of that request so we're going to need client ID response type scope all this stuff so if you go down here this is what we need so we're just going to copy this and I'm going to pull up Notepad++ and just throw that in here. So we just need to fill in our client ID. So let's grab that. Um, right here. So paste it in there. And then this redirect URI this needs to be the local host and make sure it goes all you remove everything all the way up until that ampersand so http local host and scope activity okay I think the rest of this is all fine so response type is code so that means we want to code um, yep let's try that so we're just going to throw this in the browser. OK, so we're going to allow all, hit allow. And at first, the same thing happened with the Strava API. I, I was like, what's happening? Is this broken? But if you look up here, it's giving us a code back. And take everything up until you see the hashtag. And copy that. Um, I'm just going to put that there so we don't forget it. So this is step one. What we've done is we've gotten authorization. So now the next step, step two, is to exchange this auth code for an access token. Um, and this value here is actually only valid for 10 minutes. So the pressure's on. we got to figure this out. Um, Okay, so we have the code, so this is all just stuff we don't really need to worry about. These are just, if you're getting errors, look into this stuff. Yep, 
Okay, access token request. So this is, we actually need a token in order to make a request to the API to get info. Um, so this is what we need to do. So step one is this authorization header. So authorization header must be set to base. This is, I was like, what, what does this mean when I was search reading this? But it says authorization header must be set to basic followed by a space, then the base64 encoded string of your application's client ID and secret concatenated with a colon. So what the heck does that mean? First, so this is what the structure of the request is going to look like. And from, from here on out, I'm going to start using Postman because um, we have to do a little more complex requests. So if we go to Postman, let's just, so this is going to be a post. Let's put in this first thing here. Um, step one, this is where we're going to make the post. So that goes in here. Next is author. So these are headers, which confused me at first, but we need to copy these. I'm just going to put them in Notepad just for, for now. Actually, let's put this in Notepad too. So this is a base encoded number. So we need to take, uh, what did it say? Client ID and client secret. So we need to take our client ID, which mine is here. I'll put that right here just for reference. And then our client secret. Paste that here. Get rid of that quotation. Separate it by a colon. And now we need to base 64 encode this, which I don't know what that means, but we're just going to Google base 64 encode and just go here and you need to type in client ID colon uh, client secret. And now this is going to generate like an, uh, another code. <laughs> it's kind of a lot of uh, little silly steps like this we have to go through, but so I'm just going to replace their example with ours, and you need to do that for you too. So this is just for reference, this part. So we need to add this header to our request. So go back to Postman, um, headers, authorization, and basic, then space, and then your code that you encoded here. So, value, paste, and we also need whatever they're saying here, uh, this next one, content type. All right, what is the content type? Application, whatever that means, I don't know. Okay, now let's just read over this one more time. So we need a couple more things. So these require things. So we need code, grant type, and this one we're going to use because it's recommended. So code, let's paste that in. Oh, these are actually parameters, not headers. So code. All right, so that's this part, code. So that's the code that we got from the last step that I also put right here. So we need to put that in as a uh, parameter here. And then grant type authorization code. And then what was the other one? this one and this is just localhost all right so now we have so you see how it's building this uh, this request for us based on the info we put in here so so what we did was we're requesting a token and 
we have this code to give it. So that's how it's going to work. So if we click that, okay, there you see we got the access token. Um, how long is this video? 10 minutes. All right, I'm going to cut this video off here, but in the next video, I'm going to show you how, how now that we have the access token, we can access, we can make requests to the API. Um, so I'll show you how to do that next and then how to use the refresh token. All right, I'll see you in the next video.